Hi there, you are watching a video of pressure vessels in industrial plants. Different appurtenances are attached to the exterior of the vessel for different reasons. For example, direction of the vessel, operation of the vessel, maintenance, vessel structural integrity, heat conservation, personal protection, support of different components, etc. Clips attached to a pressure vessel are aimed to hold and support for the following components. Piping, platforms, ladders, insulation, fireproofing, etc. The size and configuration of clips will be dependent on the size and loads of the components to be supported. Normally, these loads are defined by the structure's department. Same as for the clip's design. One important aspect to be taken into consideration is the local load transmitted to the shell. For large supports, the transmitted load can be significant. Therefore, the shell should be verified against buckling. A davit is a system that is used to lower and raise tools, internals and other devices to the upper part of a pressure vessel. Davits can be used to lift components during the installation of the vessel, but they are mainly used for the maintenance operations. Unless it is a requirement, they should not be installed. In order to be able to transport, erect, maintain and do some other operations in a pressure vessel, it is necessary to provide them with lifting elements. There are different types of lifting devices for both vertical and horizontal vessels. The most commonly used configurations will be described next. Lifting lugs are the most common lifting devices for pressure vessels, the simplest configuration and less expensive. There are no limitations regarding loads, but there are space limitations. Two lifting lugs are installed in vertical vessels, placed 180 degrees apart from each other. Four lifting lugs are usually installed in horizontal vessels, two at each side of each saddle. Lifting lugs must be verified against tensile and shear stress. The latter governs the design. Lugs are calculated with the equation shown on the screen. This calculation is very straightforward and simple to execute. Since the calculation is very simple, there are standards that indicate the dimensions of the lugs depending on the load to hoist as shown on the screen. Trunions are a much stronger lifting device than lugs. They confer more stability to the erection sequence because of the stiffness of the vessel. Given that trunions facilitate rotation and positioning, these are used in large vessels, mainly slender fractionating towers. For horizontal and large diameter low thickness vessels, trunions are placed on each side of the saddles. The aim of tailing lugs it is to retain and guide the vessel from the bottom part during the erection. It can be single or double, normally used when the vessel is over 20 tons of weight. It is essential to analyze the behavior of the bottom part of the vessel during erection, placing stiffening beams as required in order to avoid buckling.
A pressure vessel can be thermally insulated due to two reasons. For personal protection, temperatures above 55 to 60 degrees Celsius, and heat conservation due to process requirements. Normally, these requirements are included in the job specification. For some applications, especially in high temperature equipment designed with low and higher low materials, it is not convenient or desirable to weld any appurtenances to the vessel shell. For these cases, insulation supports of the bird cage type are designed. For vertical vessels, these brackets are hung from the top nozzle resisting on the shell without any welded elements. The thermal insulation is applied once the hydrostatic test is finished, otherwise possible leaks would not be easily detected. It is a normal practice to apply the thermal insulation of the pressure vessel at the job site, in order not to damage the insulation during transportation. However, in recent years, large vessels have been thermally insulated in the workshop to minimize the assembly time in the field. Depending on the electrical area classification at the site of the installation, the vessel should be protected in the event of a fire. Normally, the entire vessel skirt height of vertical vessels and the saddles for horizontal vessels are protected. The typical thickness of the fireproofing protection is 50 mm. The specification that establishes the requirements of the fireproofing concrete is the following API Publication 2218. Fireproofing concrete can be of two types. Heavyweight, it is the most common and most used, weights from 2200 to 2400 kilograms per cubic meter, and lightweight, it is used for large vessels, it weights from 400 to 1300 kilograms per cubic meter. In the case of slender vertical equipment, it is a sound design practice and highly recommended one to consider an arrangement of staggered platforms. We are talking about 180 degrees from each other. The dimensions, requirements and distances between platforms are indicated in the project specification. If such specification is not available, it is necessary to use existing standards that reflect good engineering practices. For example, maximum platform spacing for tall towers should not exceed 6 meters between platforms. When the piping routine for slender equipment is carried out, the piping designer will try to arrange all the pipelines attached to the tower at one side of the tower and all together. This arrangement requires that all manholes and all platforms are located on the opposite side of the tower. Therefore, the center of gravity of the vessel would be displaced, favoring the appearance of vibration phenomena. The picture on the screen shows a partial platform to access the manhole. The instrumentation associated with that platform level and space to access the staircase leading to the upper level. Same as for platforms, the dimensions, requirements and distances between platforms are indicated in the project specification. If such specification is not available, it is necessary to use existing standards that reflect good engineering practices.